I'm back. <laughs> I'm thankful to be back. Thank you so much for your kind words and your thoughts, and especially your prayers. You just don't know how much they mean to me. I'm going to be focusing uh, probably more on the journey today of the walk to Emmaus. It's what we like to call this particular part of our scripture. So here's a question for you. Isn't it just like Jesus to take a simple, ordinary, plain old thing and turn it into something extraordinary? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what were they doing? They were taking a walk, right? They were taking a walk down the road. They were telling Cleopas and his friend were telling Jesus all about the events that had happened, how tragic it was, how terrible it was. And then, in a simple moment of breaking the bread, Jesus appears to them. They realize if they run back, they have to tell everybody. And once again, what does he do? He shows up again, doesn't he? Into a locked room. That's just like Jesus. But you know, faith is a lot like a journey. Here were two friends who were walking along trying to understand what was going on, trying to make sense of things that didn't make sense. And in the midst of that, here is a man that walks alongside a woman and says, well, I hear what you're saying, but didn't the scripture say this sort of thing was going to happen? Didn't the scripture say that you could expect these things, that when Messiah comes, these kinds of signs are going to be part of it? Didn't it say so? And I imagine they probably said, yeah, that sounds familiar. I think that's something that we heard a lot about when the, in scripture about Messiah. That's probably what Jesus spoke a lot about. And here is the very one that was spoken of, talking to them as they walked, and they still didn't see him. They didn't get it. I imagine that as they walked along, they were probably recounting all of the details about that day, about that week. You know, when Jesus came in on Palm Sunday, as we call it, and the people are shouting hallelujah, you know, save us, save us from the oppressor. Because that's what Messiah was going to do. Messiah was going to save them. And then they watched as this man who had been heralded in one moment became treated like a convict just a few days later. Is betrayed by those within his own, one within his own following. And then how he is beaten and scourged. How as he walked along the road of the Via Della Rosa, how he collapsed under the weight of the cross. I imagine they even said, you know, they had to pull some guy out of the crowd to help carry the cross because he was so weak. And they probably spoke of the, the voices that a few days ago had cheered his arrival into Jerusalem were now jeering him and saying the most horrible and cruelest things against this man that they loved. Isn't that just like people? We can walk around and we can be pretty civil to others, can't we? But Lord, if somebody gives us permission to say a bad word, we pile on. And we start saying all those things that maybe we thought, and we start expressing those doubts, and we find ourselves in the midst of a crowd where we never meant to be, never thought we would be. And I imagine that as they talked about the crucifixion, they said, yes, they crucified him between two criminals. And, and the soldiers, they bartered for his clothes at the bottom of the cross. 
and we saw them take him down, we know that he died. And the women came back and they told us that the tomb is empty. What can that mean? How can we understand it? And that was the conversation down. And then after they broke bread with Jesus, I bet they ran all the way back up to Jerusalem. I bet they ran. They said, you remember when he was talking and how we had that kind of deja vu? They said our hearts burn within us. I think we could call that deja vu. You know, you've been there. Have you been there? You ever experienced deja vu? It's like, I, something about this is familiar. And I bet that's exactly what the guys, they were doing as Jesus was talking. They were going, oh, this makes sense. I, I, I know something about this. And as they ran and they told their friends and they said, we saw him. We saw him. We broke bread with him. And when we, when we, he broke the bread, we realized who it was, and he was gone. An ordinary event became something extraordinary and precious. I am sure you're tired of hearing me talk about my family. But when you got a bunch of siblings, there are so many stories. <laughs> But I will tell you, my mom passed away in 2016. She was, my dad passed away in about five years before that. But my mom and I were very close. And some of my most precious memories are Sundays, Sunday dinner at mom's house. That's what we call it. Sunday dinner at Mama's house, what you bringing? <laughs> but it wasn't the food. It was after, we're all sitting around this table, and um, y'all probably found this hard to believe, but we're a pretty gregarious group. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got eight people just to start with, and then you bring everybody else, and you got to yell over each other to, you know, to have the conversations. And you have them across the table and around Whatever sounds interesting, you jump into that. But I remember that every week we would sit there and after we had eaten, we would clear the table. And it was usually the second pass of the dishwasher. There's a lot of dishes. We would be on our second pot of coffee, sitting around the table, just catching up on each other's lives. Holding the babies that need to be held. Helping my sister grade homework. Just being together. And after a while, the guys would start off and be real polite. And then they'd look at each other and go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so they would congregate outside around the motorcycle. Or the car that needed something tinkered with. Or maybe mom had a list of chores for them. But they would go and they would do the guy thing while we sat around and did the girl thing. And I look back on those simple, ordinary Sundays as some of the most extraordinary of my life. Because you see, I think it takes time for us to realize what is truly important, what truly needs our attention. And it's not the stuff we have. It's the relationships of those that we love, our family and our friend, and those that we have, have become our family. <coughs> They're very different. And for me, some of the most important times of my life. Sometimes you'll see me and I'll have a little tiny Today's not the day for a small cross. But usually I'll have a small gold cross that I wear. And that cross is significant to me because it was given to me by my mother on the day I became an ordained United Methodist minister. 
It's not that fancy. It's not flashy. As a matter of fact, you probably don't even notice it. But when I wear that cross, I feel a special connection to her. It reminds me of what's precious. For those men who sat down to have a simple meal, and then Jesus shows up in the midst of it, don't you know that they were ecstatic? That all of a sudden, what was simple, and remember the Last Supper, what did Jesus say? Every time you gather, and you break bread together, and you drink wine together, what are you supposed to do? Remember me. Jesus wasn't gone. He was with them in that moment and in every moment. You know, every spring, we look around and we see new life bursting around us, don't we? Also a lot of pollen. <laughs> but we see new life. We see flowers pushing forth from the ground. We hear the birds tweeting every morning, sometimes squawking, depending on who they are. <coughs> the rains that give the nourishment for the plants and the animals. We see everything is fresh and new. And when we can have those moments when we can see that this is a time of rebirth, we see with new vision, we see that all of this is precious in our lives. They bring forth life. How has Christ allowed you to see things differently? How do you understand things differently? What's really important in your life? I think one of the things we learned after, the, after COVID was how important and how precious it is to spend time with people that we love. To be able to talk to a friend. You remember how weird you felt the first time you were able to hug somebody? It felt kind of weird. It was like, I don't know if I should. <laughs> but we, we, things that we took for granted, we began to see and feel differently about. We spend often our time thinking of ourselves in places of scarcity instead of realizing that we are truly blessed individuals. And it's hard to see that, especially when we live in a place that is affluent. You may not think you're very affluent, but trust me, friends, based on what a lot of other people have, you are rolling in the dough. You are incredibly rich. But you know, sometimes we spend our, our time looking around us and looking backwards over what was, instead of focusing on the gift that God has given us, this each day is an opportunity to make a difference. Each day is an opportunity to see things in a new and a different way. You see, when we spend our time comparing ourselves to one another, when we spend our time looking backwards, we're looking and we're seeing in what I call black and white. That's not the way God sees it. You see, when we allow God to inform who we are and how we live and how we, how we see the world around us, we have a different way of seeing <coughs> We have a different way of valuing others. Do you remember what I told you at the beginning of the service? The caterpillar can only see in shades of light and dark. He needs to see well enough to find out where the next meal is, right? He's got to keep munching. He's got to see well enough to be able to affix himself 
to the stalk so that his chrysalis will, as it's formed, it will be stable. And that's really all he needs to know. That's all he needs to see. But the butterfly, when the butterfly emerges from the chrysalis, it has a light and it's, its eyes have been changed. They are completely new organs. And they can see in so many different ways. They can see in shades. They can see in colors. They can perceive things that the human eye even cannot see. That is the gift of vision from the Creator. And we too have been given that vision so that when we see a person, we say, that is a person that is created by God. That is a person who is special. That is my brother. That is my sister. And I want what's best for them. And I don't care what the world says around me. I know in my heart that I only want what's best for that person. In Matthew 18, 3, it says, Jesus told the people, he said, unless you become like little children, you will never see the kingdom of God. Now, I don't know about y'all. Most of the little children I know have pretty dirty hands. <laughs> <laughs> they have, they get tunnel vision on something they want. But this is the thing I know about children. They don't see the world the same way we do. They are always living in places of wonder and surprise. You see, they smell the earth. Sometimes they even taste it. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I remember. They might see how a drop of rain on a flower petal, how it acts like a magnifying glass as it expands while they're looking at it up close and appreciating its beauty and even its scent. They're amazed that little chicks emerge from eggs as these fluffy little tiny balls of fur. They're so excited to hear them peep. You see, young hearts and young eyes look around and they see the wonder of God at every moment. They see differently. They see miracles that we have become dull to. They live in a place of joy. They don't live in spaces that limit God or God's love. So, where are you seeing God new and different? How are you experiencing God in a different way? How are you actively seeking to embrace God's love and then to offer that embrace to another? How are you striving to be the people that God has called you to be? How are you stretching and growing to become someone different? How could it be that this amazing God would love us so much that he would make that incredible sacrifice of love for each of us? Friends, look forward. Don't look backwards. Use the sight that God has given you to see differently. To look with love and grace and mercy and forgiveness to those around you. Look for the joy of transformation in your own heart and your own mind. Embrace this amazing gift of love for yourself and for others. Would you pray with me? God of us all, you love us more than we can even imagine. You love us, you hold us, you keep us close in every way. On this day, Lord, 
expand our vision. Help us to see differently. Help us to learn to see with your eyes and to love with your heart. And together may we transform the world in your love. In the name of Christ. Amen.